This message goes out to anyone who can hear me. My name is Gabriel Blythe. Or Gabe. I am a survivor broadcasting on all frequencies, and I'm here in the Salt Lake area. If this is the first time you've been able to hear this broadcast, or maybe you've been in a coma for the past year, the world as we know it is... It's over. Something happened a year ago. Almost to the day. Something I've been calling the event. Not the greatest at naming things, but... It gets worse. Or better. Maybe you like my names. My, uh... My main go-to, instead of using the Z word, is, um... Well, I call them others. The people who are not cognitively responsive. Some of them are even violent. And the violent ones are really... Well, I was going to say violent, but um, out for blood feels more appropriate. Most are just mindless. As RQ likes to call them that, mindless. RQ is another survivor in my area. She's fully aware and present. And sometimes she shows up on the radio. Mostly to chastise me, but she still shows up. She's not here today, so just a Gabe special. Thought it would be fitting we hit our one year mark the way we started this all. Alone. Confused. I've been trying to figure out what happened, but I don't know if I'm making heads or tails, or if I'm just... giving myself a distraction. Call it a project. Instead of facing the reality that is before me. Before... all of this. Did you ever procrastinate? It was easier to do the chores you never wanted to do than just to sit down and get that one project done. Avoid a paper or make a radio broadcast. I didn't do much of it, but I was known to put off the big stuff till much later. Something I would often think uh, when I was younger. When I grow up, with all that optimism, when I grow up, I'll be different than I am now. Not realizing that even though as I change and as I grow as a person, who I am is still a part of me. Still procrastinating. Still forgetting to reply to text messages. What am I procrastinating, you ask? <laughs> Survivor, it's like you know me. I think I've thrown myself into this project of decoding a military-level encrypted server so I don't have to think about the world around me. I know, sounds crazy. But if I get info about what happened to the world, I don't have to think about the world as it is in front of me. A few months back, I had to defend myself and take a life. I think that the others, the said word, I think that they are still in there. I think that their human mind is just blocked by their id their ever desire or need to survive, eat, sleep, fornicate. Call me crazy. An optimist. Someone full of hope. I don't know. But I think about that every day. I carry the crowbar I use to kill her with me like it's a self-inflicted scar. 
maybe some therapist says it's survivor's guilt or something. But I'm afraid to forget her. Afraid that you will never be able to meet that kind person, that wonderful, loving mother, when all of this is fixed. Maybe that's one of the things that RQ doesn't understand about my mission here. She... She's dedicated to surviving. And I'm dedicated to restoration. But... She is right to question my motives. Is it even worth restoring? Do you think the old world is worth bringing back? A world filled with so many horrors that we happily inflicted upon ourselves that it would make an ancient dark god blush? Or do you see the hope in it all? That things can change and grow. You would think, after a year of nothing but time, I would have an answer for that. But yet, here I am, wielding this weapon purely because I can't forgive myself. Distracting myself from myself. <laughs> I started this out saying if you were new here. Well, unfortunately, this is pretty common. The whole woe is me vibe. Not as of late, granted. Fortunately, having our cue here has helped with a lot of that. Hearing someone else's words out loud is more revitalizing. That's the word revitalizing than you would know. Isolation is a scary thing. What was that, Gabe? What a terrible segue. I mean, really. And while I'm at it, what's the deal with something only privileged white man would complain about? I've been spending too much time around RQ because I almost swore just because I could. <laughs> Anyways. This past year has made it easy to appreciate the times you're alone versus the times you get to be alone. If you know the difference, you get what I'm saying. For those of you who don't, how's not having depression and anxiety going for you? <laughs> uh, I'm kidding. I'm sure the feeling is easy to understand. Being invited to a party to only sit in a corner versus the night you scheduled with yourself to hold yourself and ask the hard questions. An action film or a period piece. I wish I could always make jokes. Help your day be better. Be brighter. I'll admit it's hard to keep up hope with no signs of your life out there. You know, I listen every day. I fall asleep at the radio scanning stations. White noise is quickly turning into something I can fall asleep to at the drop of a hat. RQ says it's something that keeps her awake. Maybe I can convince her to watch the radio once in a while. Every night, I talk to her. Sometimes, she seems willing to cooperate, you know? And others, it feels like I am pushing against a wall. She's so smart, too. And in the perfect way that makes you feel so dumb. Now, I know. I know. I'm not dumb. I mean, look at everything that I've done to survive this past year alone. She's just differently smart, <laughs> proving, in fact, that I am a genius with my excellent choice of words there. Anyways, <laughs> she's always willing to listen. Now, at first, um, 
she would just tune me out. But now she's willing to actually hear me out, listen to my thoughts and my feelings. Well, I have to say something like, RQ, this has been on my mind lately, or this is important to me that you understand why I feel like this. A lot of, like, big therapy speech. (laughs) Sounds like I'm in a relationship with her. I know. But even if it's just a partnership, I gotta communicate. I don't want to say that she's putting me first, because she's always doing her stuff first, which is good. But I know that she will put something I asked her to do on her checklist. And that's... Progress? I don't know. Oh, boy. This really turned into a ramble, didn't it? Man, classic Gabe episode, you guys. (laughs) I'm sorry, Survivor. But again, it feels appropriate to celebrate our year anniversary the way we started this. With me just spewing words at you. (sighs) Well, if you would like to tell me to shut up, you gotta reach out. And one way that you can do that See, Gabe, that's that's how you segue. Beautiful. Perfect. While I stay on the college building, just off of State Street, I'll be there tomorrow, from midday to sundown. I do want to let you know, I am proud of you. You have fought so hard to make it this far. And in a world full of so many more questions than there are answers filled with more frustrations than reasons to celebrate. You have made it. And with that, I really mean, you aren't alone. You don't have to be. (sighs) Happy anniversary, everybody. Stay safe out there.